Hey, what's up guys and gals? Before we get to today's video, I wanted to remind you that Challenger Fest 2020 is right around the corner. No, it is not canceled. We had to postpone it in April because of the pandemic. We pushed it until May. Still things weren't where they needed to be, so we pushed it again. And I decided to just wait when we knew things had opened back up and at least somewhat normal, try to schedule a date at a later time. We were able to get September 17th, that's a Thursday, for our drag racing. And I want to call a special thanks to Holly, who was already sponsoring Challenger Fest, but they pulled a couple of strings for us and got us in that calendar with Beach Bend and we, we partnered up so that we have our racing for Challenger Fest on Thursday and it will ease right into a brand new event Holly is putting on called Mo Party and it's something you're not going to want to miss so we're going to we're going to arrange our schedule around Mo Party's schedule so that you get really two events in one and if you pre-register for Challenger Fest challengerfest.net is the website you'll get a discount code to attend Holly's Mo Party. And that's drag racing, that's car show, that's everything. You can kind of pick what you want to do and each item is discounted. So pre-register for Challenger Fest, you will get a discount code from yours truly for Mo Party. With that said, I look forward to seeing you guys in September. Now let's get to today's video. What's up everybody welcome back to the speedy's garage youtube channel i know it's been a while since i've posted up any content and i just really really haven't felt like editing together um any videos to be honest i just haven't been motivated to do it so sorry about that i appreciate you guys that have reached out to me on instagram or facebook and sent me messages checking on me it's it's nice to know i'm missed <laughs> and i'll try to start putting some content out but I, like i said it's really haven't been motivated to do it i've got some filmed um but i just haven't wanted to go through the effort of editing it together it's some stuff on the hellcat so stay tuned we're playing around with some e85 so that's what's going to be coming up on that today we're talking about our 2016 camaro and there may be a change to some of the characters on the channel this car being one of them um i started taking a look at mileage and whatnot and i reset my trip meters every month and i can kind of keep track of how many miles i drive the cars and i noticed that this one had been sitting covered in the garage almost all the time um, since the pandemic and our office is closed so um, blessed to be able to work from home so i'm able to do that but it means i'm not driving and the primary purpose of this car was was basically to drive to work uh, mostly drove it during the week and i might take the hellcat like on a real pretty friday or something and then of course we have the forerunner which i'll never get rid of i don't think i love that truck and it's more for utility for stuff around the house but i was driving this car to work and with the office being closed that just wasn't happening and so i looked at the mileage and for like may june july it's august now i think i'd only driven it like 30 or 40 miles so it was just sitting in the garage covered and i just hated to see it sit there and depreciate and not get used i would drive it around the block once a week just to keep the fluids moving but that was about it so i started considering selling it and i did the normal you know went by carmax and they were way out of the ballpark not even close um hit up carvana who was actually pretty close to what i wanted to get for the car and then i went by one of the local chevy dealers and they were thrilled to see it it's in good shape low miles it's kind of what they're looking for and i guess um used car values are up because of everything going on uh, because I got a pretty strong offer so I'm gonna check one more dealership just to kind of do a sanity check and then more than likely this vehicle will be gone tomorrow so I'm gonna go grab the title out of the bank I got it in a lockbox at the bank and uh, we'll be selling it outright there's gonna cut me a check for it and I've always been eyeballing um, the new C8 so I'd have my eye on one of those. I had intended probably a year or two from now to trade the Camaro in on a C8 at the time. Um, I didn't want to get a first model year. That's a lot of design change. And I was a little bit worried about any kind of uh, bugs that they may have to work out or whatever. And so with this car, this was a first model year Gen 6 Camaro and it had a few bugs that had to get worked out. There were a couple of recalls for oil cooler lines and torque converter had to get swapped out the computer system the they called it the human interface module had some trouble where it would randomly pick a radio station at you know all on its own and do weird stuff drain the battery and all that got fixed eventually but i really don't want to go through that with another car especially one that had such a large design change with completely new platform engine in the back now and all that so i'll let all the bugs get worked out and then we'll start looking at a c8 corvette but in the meantime i didn't want 
the Camaro to just sit in the garage depreciating for another year or two. A buddy of mine who trades cars a lot told me that a car is going to depreciate about $150 to $200 a month on average. And so that's a lot of um, depreciation over the next couple of years. And I would rather uh, get the money for the car now, maybe put it into an investment and let it um, you know, accrue a little bit or grow a little bit. And that's just that much more I have to put towards the C8 uh, if I decide to buy one. So that's the plan. So we're gonna go down here and get one more kind of appraisal on this vehicle to see what this other dealer might wanna offer for it. Then we're gonna go from there. And interestingly, I, I never really loved this car. I don't exactly know why um, I liked it. And it, it drives great. It's It's got enough power. Um, I like a little bit of variety. So I had a 370Z that I drove to work before I had this. And I traded the 370Z in on the Camaro. And, and one of the big reasons I made that change is the 370, the weight was almost the same as this Camaro. But the Camaro had like another 100 and something horsepower. 120, I think it was. And so it kind of made sense from a performance perspective. It's like, wow, I'm going to pick up 100 horsepower but keep the weight about the same. And it's a very nimble car, but it feels bigger than it is. Like inside, you feel a little bit cramped, but outside it feels bigger. The 370, I felt like I could just jam it just about anywhere, st stuff it into a corner or whatever. It was almost like driving a go-kart. And even though this Camaro, the weight's about the same, it just always felt like a little bit bigger car. And it did some odd things on the shifting. Like if you put it in paddle mode um, and mash down on it, it would hit the rev limiter and, and bounce off the rev limiter. And like, I like the way the Hellcat is set up where you put it in paddle mode. Like I paddle down a gear, now it's in paddles and I mash down on it. Well, when it gets to the rev limiter, it shifts. It goes ahead and shifts up for you. So I like that design a whole lot better than um, it hitting the rev limiter when you just downshift and get into paddle mode. The radio layout and stuff was a little bit weird. The, the glass, I'm getting picky now, but the glass on the radio is very reflective and so you get a lot of glare. I didn't like that. And um, I didn't like that the seats wouldn't lean back a little bit farther than they would. So those were kind of the nitpicky things about the car. But for whatever reason, like I love the Hellcat. I just love driving it. I love being in it. The Forerunner is like 20 years old and I love driving it. I love being in it. And that sounds really weird because it's such a, you know, so much older vehicle. But I just never loved this car. I just liked it. And so that was another real strong uh, reason I decided to go ahead and, and start looking at and selling it. And it could have been, you know, those problems that I had with it early on. On getting those bugs worked out it was at the dealer quite a bit um, until they got it all sorted and that may have just kind of put a bad taste in my mouth for some reason I just never got over that I don't I don't know for sure but that could definitely be a factor but again never really loved this car just just kind of liked it all right we're almost there and like I said I've already gotten two uh, pretty strong offers to buy this car so I've already kind of got very, very close. I'd say within 500 bucks of what I actually want to get out of the vehicle. Um, this is just one more stop. Number one, just to get out and do something on the weekend, go up here and have them look it over and uh, I'll see what they offer me and then uh, we'll make a decision, but it's 99% sure tomorrow I'm going to drop it off and, and get a check from somebody. Okay, well, they took the information on the car. Their buyer, he said, wasn't wasn't in today. It's a it's a Sunday, so most car car dealerships are actually closed around here. This one just happened to be open, so I'll wait. And I told them um, I need to hear back from them first thing in the morning with their offer, and gave them an idea of what I was looking for because I've already gotten, like I said, a couple of strong offers. So I'm definitely uh, going to grab the title in the morning and, and take one of those um, other ones if I don't hear from these guys. And I kind of talked about what I didn't like about this car. But I'll talk about some of the things I do like about it. So this one was optioned with magnetic ride suspension, which I like. Um, it gives you the option to set it up in you know street, sport, track. Or I think it's sport, track, and touring is what Chevy calls it. And I usually kept it in um, in touring for the street. Unless I was going to get out and play around a little bit, then I'd set it to sport and it would firm up quite a bit. It, it does that. Uh, the steering actually changes. This has electric power steering, so when you're in touring, it's very easy. You can turn it with one finger. Uh, when you're in sport or track, the steering actually gets um, stiffer the faster you go. So as you pick up speed, it gets it gets more tight, which is nice to be able to switch that. I also option this one with the um, NPP performance exhaust from the factory. Which is pretty cool. It sounds amazing. the uh, 
um, valves in it that close when you're just cruising around or open up when you get on it like that. And when you put it in uh, track mode, I think the valves stay open all the time, but don't, don't quote me on that. But those are some of the things I really liked about the car. And I really liked the way it looked when I first saw it. Uh, I really liked the lines and um, the layout, you know, interior, how the, the air conditioning was set up with the round knobs and you control the temperature with the bezel of the uh, vent actually, which was pretty cool. And I like that kind of stuff. The buttons and everything were laid out really nice and easy to get to. This one's a 2SS, so it has the leather seats that are heated and cooled, heated steering wheel and the nice Bose stereo and, and all like that. So it was optioned really good too, but again, it's just sitting in the garage covered and I am eyeballing that C8, so probably makes the most sense. It's one of those it's one of those decisions, it's kind of funny that you start to make where you realize you're an adult and it's kind of, it's kind of sad in a way that you're making a practical decision rather than an unpractical or impractical one. Um, and you know, putting that money in an investment for a year or so until you're ready to purchase the next thing. Now, the dealership I just left actually had a C8 on the showroom floor. Um, it was already sold, and I did talk to their uh, general manager about their process. And because of the pandemic, there was a strike at GM this year, and all of those things have impacted production of the new C8 Corvette, and it's made it a mess. So people who ordered cars, put deposits down, got specific options that they wanted. Those options aren't available in some cases, and so they're gonna get a car that may be missing an aerodynamic package that they actually wanted on the car. And that's, you know, if you order a car and spec it out exactly like you want it to be, that's disappointing when that happens. So um, that's why it's always best, in my opinion, to avoid that first year shenanigans, I'll call it. You know, the Hellcat went through the same exact thing. There were $25,000 markups and people having to bid on the car to get the ones that they wanted and then people put deposits down and then the cars couldn't get built in time to be a 2015 model and so they made them 2016 models but oh by the way we're raising the price ten thousand dollars because new options so it kind of turns into a big headache and the car buying experience should be fun and so I avoid all of that and just exercise a little bit of patience so that's what I'm gonna do here and just kind of sit back and wait and see what happens. I do kind of feel bad for the people that overpay for things. They're paying the, the dealer markups. And this particular dealer told me that they didn't do a markup, that, that they did it on a bid system. So the car comes in, you if you're interested in a C8, they take your information and it's a silent auction. And whoever bids the most money gets the car. And I think the one that was on the showroom floor um, went for about 15, 14, 14 or 15,000 over sticker, which isn't as much as I've seen some of the other ones go for. So um, I guess if you got that kind of money to throw around, or maybe you want to have that first year Corvette uh, C8 and make it a collector item and you're gonna put it away in bubble wrap for 30 years and, and you can do that and try to recoup some of that money on the long end of the of the deal, more power to you. I buy a car to drive it and enjoy it. I would rather in, invest in other financial instruments to make my retirement or my money and enjoy a car for what it is. So I'm just not into the collecting and you know put, putting them away and bubble wrapping them or whatever. So that's it. Say goodbye to the Camaro. Um, hopefully, a uh, year, year and a half from now, we'll be looking at a C8. A little update from Speedy's Garage. I know I haven't put out much content, like I said, in a while. I'll try. No promises, though, to be honest. I'm just not as motivated uh, here lately to go and edit video, but I will try. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage, as well as our website, www.speediesgarage.net. And hopefully, I will see you out there.